r slash ask women what's your never again story i feel like they are all self-explanatory so let's just list them off never dating someone who's extremely prone to jealousy again they stop at nothing to guilt trip you read gaslighting emotional abuse never dating someone who literally lives in their parents basement again what was i thinking in trying to prove i wasn't shallow i proved i was an idiot he was 30 by the way never dating someone with a tragic one that got away story again will not waste my time being constantly compared to someone else ever again never dating someone who mentions at every opportunity that they were raised by women raised to respect women etc ever again i learned the hard way that saying that shit more than once is a nice guy tm specialty none of these are even the same person if i didn't feel like it was my life goal to find my person i would have given up by now take a laxative without drinking a bunch of water i thought i was going to die what happens when someone does this extremely excruciating stomach cramps for hours accept a pity date from someone i know i have zero interest in it was awkward as duck from start to finish and ended with him groping me psa never accept a pity date for your sake and everyone else's Staying at a job for 18 years because I kept thinking it would get better eventually. I finally realized I was in an emotionally abusive relationship with my former employer. It wasn't me. It was them. I moved on and am finally actively appreciated for my contributions. Someone who repeats my own thoughts and jokes back to me as if they are their own original thoughts and jokes. It's even worse if someone retells your joke to everyone else in the room. Ha 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 ha. But Bannon just said, and then they duck up the delivery so badly it's no longer funny, and everyone else is wondering why you said something so lame. Give someone a second chance after they bail on the first date. Unless it's like a really good, unforeseeable reason, mom in the hospital, and they're apologetic and kind. Got stood up by the same guy twice, and then this jerk tried to friend me on Facebook afterwards. Letting a guy pick me up for a first date. It forces you to stay even if you're uncomfortable, and lets the guy know where you live, which is a disadvantage if the date doesn't go well. I let a guy pick me up last month, something I never do, because my car wouldn't start and I wish I hadn't. One time, I refused to let a guy pick me up and met him at a restaurant instead. The date went really well, and when we finished eating, he suggested we go somewhere else for drinks. There were no bars in walking distance. So he offered to drive me to one he liked a couple miles away, and I agreed. Drinks part of the night was also fine, right up until it was time to leave. In order to get back to my car, I needed him to give me a ride back to the restaurant. He refused to start his car unless I made out with him first. I repeatedly told him no, and he pushed anyway, until I was forced to give in, because he'd driven us to an unfamiliar neighborhood and I had no friends nearby that I could call. Then he couldn't understand why I jumped out of his car as soon as we got to the parking lot and didn't want to go on a second date. I had something similar happen. He locked my purse in the trunk for safety at the start of the date, then toward the end of the date I was held hostage to him jacking off in front of me before he'd let me get my purse back. I was 19 at the time and had no idea there could be an ulterior motive for keeping my purse, keys, mode of transportation, away from me. Never again, will I agree to additional roles with the promise of a salary increase without getting it in writing. Doubled my workload, didn't get paid a dime. Sleep with multiple co-workers slash supervisors within the same job, only three. We all know for the most part, humans can't keep their mouths shut, so once it got out I slept with X, Y and Z at my job I had throughout college. I was gossiped about so much and called the UPS slut behind closed doors. To make matters slightly worse, the men I slept with were all supervisors, so you know they thought I only did it to advance in the job. My good friend who worked with me, didn't sleep with him haha, showed me a group chat with the guys in our work section and showed all the hateful things said about me, and one co-worker even threatened to rape me if he made a move on me and I rejected him. I didn't quit. But after my friend showed me those messages, I stopped talking to virtually everyone at my job except him, and I cut ties with the three I had relations with. 
I had to move my work area and everything. Let this be a lesson. Don't sleep with people at your job, unless you are dating them, even if it is just a one night thing. Two of them were a one time thing, but one it was a mutual friends with benefits. I am responsible for my actions and I'm not playing the victim at all. I was mostly disappointed at my one co-workers who said he'd rape me if I reject his advances. Also, I did report him and he got fired. Walking my cat on a leash in the backyard. She made this unearthly yowling noise while running in circles at the very end of the leash. Then she latched onto a chain link fence and tried to climb into the neighbor's yard. When I pulled her off of that, she latched onto my shoulder. At some point, possibly when I was pulling her off the fence, her little claw started bleeding so there's blood on my shirt from her, and I'm bleeding from her scratches and my boyfriend had to come save me. She's so energetic and I thought she would love to have a little romp outside. I came in and cried because she got hurt. Never again. I will never try to be friends with an ex simply because we have history after years together. It ended with him being jealous, because I moved on and spreading nasty malicious lies about me to our friends. Thankfully our friends aren't idiots and know me, so none of his lies got spread around very well. The last time I saw him, I didn't even notice him until my sisters pointed him out. Never gonna read into someone's behavior to try to find a silver lining. People show who they are by what they do, it's really that simple. I dated a guy that lived 60 miles away from me. He hardly ever came to see me and constantly complained about the long drive. He didn't want me to visit him or pick him up from the train. He could go from hours to days without contacting me, saying he was so busy with work, he worked part time at a pizza place, but he had me so convinced that he loved me and we were meant to be together. He had me wrapped around his finger. I'd believe any bullshit excuse he could come up with for why he couldn't come see me. This went on for 2 years. Yep, I'm that kind of stupid. Spoiler, he was seeing a girl he told me not to worry about the entire time, even living with her for most of it. They are married now. A couple months later, I started dating a guy that also lived about 60 miles away from me, same area, around our state capital, on our first date. He drove 60 miles to pick me up, took me 45 miles back to the capital city for an art festival, 45 miles to drive me back home. By this point it's around midnight. He held my hand while I slept in the car on the way back. He then drove 60 miles back to his house and had to be to work at 5 in the morning. We've now been dating 2 years and have been living together for 1 year. He had 4 jobs when I met him and he still never complained about the drive to see me. He always answered my texts and calls. There were times he'd make the drive up, and we would just go straight to sleep only for him to leave at 4 in the morning to get to work on time. We did this multiple times a week for a year before we moved in together. I love telling this story because it's the perfect example of, if he wants to see you, he'll see you. I love how almost all of these are dating sex stories and I was just going to say staying up all night cramming for a test. Slept right through my alarm. Missed the test. Bruh. I'll never beg anyone to stay ever again. If you don't want to be in my life, I don't want you here. This one hit me hard. I feel like I might be in this situation right now. I'm an incredibly committed person, but the person I'm dating is constantly telling me that they don't know if they're ready for marriage, something I don't ask of them and says they feel like to get the answers they're looking for they might need to be single again. Just to get some space. But I really do love this person and can imagine my whole life with them. Yet I don't think they feel the same. It's heart wrenching. And I'm in a constant state of anxiety over it. One time, I went tubing down a river in my small town and it turned into a day from hell. So I lived in a town of 900 population for a number of years up in northern Minnesota. There was a river in the town that didn't seem to get much tubing action. Our family used to come up and we would go tubing down a river that was an hour away. This year we decided to go local. So my father-in-law drove us there in nothing but swimsuits. We had no phones and no shoes. He dropped us off at the bridge and drove 20 minutes away to where we would get out to wait for us. Well we jumped in and everything was going great. The water was deep and moving slow but not bad. As we were going along, we came to a large beaver dam. 
We had gone too far to turn back so we tried to crawl over it with our tubes. The other side was horrible. Muddy shallow water that smelt like poop. Every step we took, we sank in about 2 feet of mud. Finally the water was deeper, but the river had so many trees down on it. We had to crawl over them. By this time we were out for about a hour, with no end in sight. We kept going because we had no choice. It was about 80 degrees that day and dreadfully humid. The horseflies came out and started attacking our heads. The guys got hit more than us girls, probably because of our hair. So as we float at a snail pace, the river starts getting more and more narrow. There are these bushes on either side hanging down into the water. As we start brushing up against them, huge spiders start falling all over us. We were all screaming trying not to touch the sides. It was horrifying. We get to an electric fence that is hovering over and across the stream at about 2 feet. We can hear it buzzing so we knew it was on. We slid into the water and pushed our tubes under it and prayed we didn't touch it. Finally we get through the spiders about 2 hours in. We get to a large tree down over the river. We can't go over it because it's too big. So we all walk out about 30 feet in waist high brush, barefoot and practically naked, to walk around this tree. As we get back to the river, we are picking ticks off us, yes ticks. You would think it doesn't get any worse, but it does. So, finally back in the river, and by this point we are all dying for this nightmare to be over. Also it's getting late. It was as about 8 pm but in northern Minnesota summer, it's light until 10 to 11 pm. The mosquitoes start to come out. So now we have mosquitoes, spiders, ticks and horseflies. The river starts to become very s-like and it's taking forever to get to wherever the f we were going. About 3 hours and we finally see his car. We can't get to him though because of the curves of the river. So for 45 more minutes we can see him but keep going. We finally come wobbling out of the river so thankful it was over. As we are getting out we realize that we were covered in leeches. Yup. We pulled them off and we are all bleeding from scratches and covers in bug bites. He laughed and said I got a bit worried there. You were gone for 3 hours. Thought you might be having too much fun. It was by far the most torturing experience of my life. Also I was terrified that we were going to have to spend the night out there.